Hello, hockey fans! Welcome on back into the neutral zone after two weeks of conflicting schedules and just general uniqueness. We are back! Adam and Zach together again on the Neutral Zone. We have got some fun lined up for you tonight. We've got some serious stories. I've got some stuff on Ben Bishop, who announced his retirement earlier today from the Dallas Stars. Zach has got a story on the Minnesota Wild and some of the things they are going through right now. And then on some of the lighter sides and cellular sides... It's 2021. It's darn near 2022. Why are games still being blacked out? And Zach found some NHL vodka. We've got to give that a, that a try. Don't worry. We confirm with the experts before doing this. So we will give you a taste test and let you know what we think of the official Official vodka of the NHL. All that plus other silliness and shenanigans here on the Neutral Zone. And welcome on back in here to the Neutral Zone. I am Adam. He is Zach. We are back. You're a poet and you didn't know it. I I have my moments, I tell you what. And we haven't even gotten into the vodka yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I want to say thank you, Zach, first of all. Listened back to the episode that you did solo last week. Excellent job. Thank Excellent you, Excellent job. Thank it's you. funny. We hadn't really... We had just started to talk with each other of what stories we were going to be bringing when I realized I had to bail. Two of the stories you brought up, I was planning on talking about last week. So it was serendipitous. It was perfect. It was wonderful. Oh, good. The NHL in China and which, what other one? Olymp- the Olympics. That was, that was a big, the big Emily Kaplan and everybody else from ESPN doing that preview of the Olympics and... Oh gosh, I, I don't blame any of the players. I mean, it's it's up to now. If you catch COVID while you're over there, you could be gone five weeks. Is is what they're saying? It could be up to five weeks that you're quarantined in China. So I don't blame any of the players for having second thoughts. But I was going to talk about that, and then there's just been so many coaches fired here oh, in the last oh, two yeah, weeks. Yeah. I, so. I was talking about Elaine Vigneault and uh, who, oh the Canucks coach. Mm-hmm. Coach. Yeah, the you had the Canucks in there and just front office personnel, left, right, center, forward, sideways. Everybody's getting axed and getting canned. So well, and, it, and it's funny that both of those two names. Um, so Elaine Elaine Vigneault was the one that got fired from the Flyers, and then the Canucks fired their coach and they replaced him with. Bruce Boudreaux, and both of those names are just retreads. Like, they've been to so many different organizations through the whole league. The NHL is very bad about that, yes. It's... Incestuous. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was gonna... I was gonna say almost like nepotism, where it's just... Once you're in the club, you're in the club. Yeah. But it's impossible to get in the club. Yeah. You know, it's like somebody's gotta die in order to, right. to create a vacancy there in the in the NHL coaching circles. So, excellent job. I wanted to say that before we Thank got you. too much further. Very nice, very nice job, Lesson. I heard good things, too, from from others. So, Thank very, you. very nice. Well, it, you know, I had such fun articles to start off with, just the ones I found on um, NPR about the, about the lady beating the other person with a prosthetic leg, and then the two, <laughs> the two fathers, the first father-son 
duo who'd ever been suspended for biting in the NHL. <laughs> Only in the NHL. Only in the NHL could that happen. True stranger than fiction. You know, hey, maybe when Brad Marchand has a kid, you know, he can be the second, like, father-son duo for anything. It wouldn't be biting, it'd be licking this time, but maybe. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> goals to shoot for. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hashtag family goals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, before we get any further, let's acknowledge our sponsors for the week. We'll do some of the preliminary stuff, get that out of the way, and get going with... The new stuff for this week. So, Zach, take it away. We want to thank our sponsors, uh, Southern California Warriors Semi-Pro Football Team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes. Whether it's playing to get film to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. Uh, you can find them on Twitter, at SoCalWarriors, on Instagram, at Southern California underscore Warriors, as well as Facebook, Southern California Warriors. <clears throat> we also want to thank Background Check International, Businesses, are you looking to background check a new hire? Let Kit Freeman take care of that for you. Kit founded and has managed Background Check International since 1994, and he's here to help you with the screening process. Contact Kit and let him help the hiring process, help him make the hiring process that much easier. This business is used for professional background checks and not for the use of any crimes such as identity theft or any other illegal activity. Uh, you can find him on his website or on Facebook, Background Check International, BCI. Uh, also, you can find us on on social media at IE Sports Radio, on Twitter at IE Sports Radio, on Instagram, or on Facebook, IE Sports Radio. Um, you can also find us on Twitter here. I'm at the Pupless. I am at Adam underscore Karnick. And the show is at IESR Neutral Zone. And also, be sure with IE Sports Radio, we are now on Patreon. Be sure to check that out. You can sponsor us for just $5 a month. You get access to things like our podcasting university and shout outs to on all of our shows at Bay Area Raised and at M. Los Great are both Patreon sponsors of us. So thank you to them. Be sure to check that out. There's other tiers as well, all sorts of great stuff that you can get there. Check us out on Patreon. And then for those of you listening here tonight, live on Spreaker, be sure to jump on into the chat. I see Taryn is in there. Good evening, Taryn. Taryn is still a little scared from your story last week about the woman with the prosthetic leg. And Taryn, to be honest, if I was in the crowd and saw someone just take their leg off, and turn it into a club, I would be scared too. So I'm right there with you, Taryn. Oh my God. Uh, all right. Now, regular fans of IE Sports Radio, and hopefully you are one. If you are not, we've got all sorts of cool, fun shows. But one of them that you definitely need to check out if you aren't familiar with it is Let's Whine About Sports on Sunday nights. Mike Pat does an excellent, excellent job not only breaking down sports in the Washington, D.C. area and also just on a national vein, but he also is a bit of a wine connoisseur. And he always opens his show with a bottle of wine that he will then describe in detail and actually drink during the show and give you a review. Zach, this week, has the hockey version, and we'll have Zach put the pictures up on our Twitter page, at IESR Neutral Zone, by the way, in case you missed it the first time. So, Zach found this... NHL official bottle of vodka. Now, the one he got, of course, has the Red Wings logo on it, which I can live with. It's a, it's a cool logo. 
That might be the Detroit team, but that's okay. <laughs> but what what is this, Zach? What is this bottle? Okay, it's New Amsterdam Vodka. Um, five times distilled and 100% grain neutral spirits. What's the proof oh, on this? I was this? just going to say, the proof is... It's 40% alcohol by volume, so 80 proof. Oh, so it's an 80 proof. All right. Shouldn't knock us out before the end of the show, then. All right. All right. So go ahead, get that. Now, Mike, he because he is very much the professional on okay. this, I consulted him with him before we did the show tonight, wanted to, to get as many insights from him. Of course. One of the things he told us, let's see, uh, Vodka, when we get into this, we could be experiencing any so cream, spice, and citrus are kind of the baseline flavors okay. we should be looking for Good. with this. And obviously, of course, you can shoot. We are going to be sipping the vodka tonight. We don't want to get in instantly trashed. This is a weeknight, it's a school night, you know, all that jazz. <laughs> yeah. And as Mike always says in his show, too, it's good for us to do this. Don't ever drink and drive. Correct. Don't do, always, always Uber, taxi, stay at the bar, something. Don't don't drink and drive. It's not worth it. Celebrate responsibly. Exactly. All right. So let's let's get into this. Let's get into this official vodka of the NHL. Tell me when. Oh, thank you. <laughs> The sound effects, too. We're getting this right in front of the mic. The sound effects are perfect. Oh, yeah. All right. Cheers. Salute. A little bit of a bite. It's, it's not top shelf, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit of a bite behind this vodka. <laughs> I think it was only like $12. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, the more the more we learn. But I, I, I didn't, didn't buy it necessarily for quality. I bought it you know, for the logo. You know, and it is a very appeal. sharp looking <laughs> bottle. I will give it that. Yeah, we'll, again, we'll put the picture up on the Twitter page, but it's a very tall bottle, and it's got... Both the logos very prominently featured, one in the front and one in the back. And since it's for the Red Wings, it's got their their hashtag, the LGRW, running down the side. It is it is a very sharp looking bottle. Yeah. The logos for the team and the league. Mm -hmm. And yep, let's go Red Wings. The vodka itself. I could take or leave, I guess. I've, I have had worse. Okay. Right. I have definitely... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have definitely had worse. Pop off, come check. <laughs> vodka, brand vodka. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. I definitely... We were talking about the different, like, <clears throat> the scents and everything that, that Mike was talking about. And... I think I can get a little like a citrus appeal to it a little bit. A little bit, yeah, a little bit of that citrus hint to it. And we are we are consuming this in holiday glasses. We're not doing shooters, we're doing holiday yeah. glasses to yeah. make it a little easier to get get through the show. Get into the get into the feeling, get into the mood of the season, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, that's that starts us up. So this is New Amsterdam limited edition official vodka of the NHL. Um, I would say if you are a vodka connoisseur, maybe you don't necessarily need to have it on your shelf. But if you're an NHL fan and you want a cool looking bottle, it's definitely worth the bottle. Yeah. Nice collectible. Yeah, nice, a very nice collectible. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, and a fun way to start the show. Now we'll see how quickly the rest of the show goes <laughs> on the night and what kind of stories we wind up telling. See if it goes downhill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How Now, how long can we keep the train on the tracks tonight now that we've had this start? Right. 
We do also have some pretzels here that will be, uh, during the breaks, we'll be having some of those to, to soak it up a little bit. We won't we won't munch on, on mic, though, on, on show. We'll keep that during the breaks. All right. So on to the news of the day, and it's kind of an extension from over the weekend. Ben Bishop, you may recall, he's the Dallas Stars goaltender. He has been out for 14, 15 months or so with a knee condition. He did not start the season in net with the Stars. He made his rehab start, if you will, with the Texas Stars in the American Hockey League over the weekend. He intended to make three starts. The very first start, he faced 34 shots. He gave up eight goals. And he knew as soon as that game was done, it was over. It was over. The... The Stars general manager made a statement afterwards that, and I don't have it right in front of me, so I'm not going to be able to quote directly, but effectively that they knew it was over. That that unfortunately he's he's done all the right things. He has fought hard. He has put his all into this. His body is just done. And it would simply be a matter of time. Then there was a report that came out that Bishop is willing to waive his no-trade clause to get moved to another team. Uh, In the NHL, even if you're retired, you can still have your contract traded around back and forth. Salary dumps and some teams, believe it or not, Arizona Coyotes have a hard time hitting the salary floor so they'll be willing to absorb contracts just so that they can have money on the books. I, that blows my mind. I've never thought that they'd have to... <laughs> oh, I yeah. Know, I, you know, I know I, everybody always talks about a salary cap. I've never heard of a salary floor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, we don't have enough time to get me started. Yeah, don't get me started on that <laughs> aspect of it. But suffice to say, sometimes in hockey teams have a hard time getting enough money on the books so they will acquire players they have no intention intent thank you intention of playing and so ben bishop has said sure i will allow you to trade me in the in the event that somebody needs a salary dump or needs to acquire some salary sure so he's made himself available for trades okay and then today he officially announced that he is retiring. Quote, I guess one of the hard things is I get out there and I still feel pretty good in some of the practices and you still feel like you have the skill to play in this league. He last played in the bubble up in Canada. But then when your knee tells you you can't, it's tough. You okay? So you mentioned he faced thirty-four shots and he let in eight goals. Okay, so against an average goalie, like give me some numbers I can compare it to. I don't know. I don't know if that's good, bad, what. Oh, not good, not good. I mean, simple math. The number you want to shoot for is you stop nine out of every ten shots you face. Okay, it's what you. You'd like it to be a little higher than that, but for easy math, you want to stop 9 out of every 10. So if you face 34, you'd like to stop 30 or 31 of them. Okay. 29, okay, you might accept. To only stop 26, that's no good. Oh, wow. That's no good. Yeah, you only stop 26 shots out of 34 faced. That's well below 90%. So it doesn't... I mean, it's not absolutely terrible, but at the same time, he's not keeping up with everybody else. In the right, okay. exactly. And to give you his his career numbers here, um, let's see, his his career statistics, as I pull up hockeyreference.com, when in doubt, the sportsreference.com is always the best way to go. He <laughs> had a career save percentage of 921. So 92%. He would, yeah, 92%. Okay. 
So he was saving, you know, more like 18, you know, 18 shots out of 20 or uh, bump that up again, 28 shots out of 30 okay. was normal. So only 26 saves and 34 shots is oh, bad. Yeah. Is is very bad, and you know that it wasn't just rust because he decided he didn't even want to do the other two rehab games. That he could oh, tell wow. right away from that that he he was done. So he finishes his NHL career. Began in two thousand eight, played parts of thirteen different seasons with five different teams. Yeah, I remember he started with the Lightning, or, or at least that's where I, I started to follow him. That's that's probably one of his most famous teams, as he played with the Lightning when they faced the Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup Final in 2000, would that have been 15? Two, yeah, 2015, they faced the Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup Final. Uh, came up short. He actually he got injured in that series, but played through it. And then he was the Vez- He won the Vezina Trophy three times. Most recently, the series, the season right before the pandemic, he won the Vezina. So, oh, oh, when the uh, did the Stars win it that year in the bubble? Who won in the bubble? No, I think it was Tampa Bay. But they played against yes. the Stars. They played the Stars. But that right. was it. That same year he won the. Vezina? Uh, no, the year before that. The oh, okay. year before the bubble. The gotcha. year before the bubble, he won the Vezina. So, certainly one of hockey's better goalies, better players, gave it his all. You can't, you can't fault his effort. You can't fault him for trying. He mm-hmm. certainly, he certainly tried. It just unfortunately, when your knees go, your knees go. You see it with, you see it with catchers in baseball. You see it with other athletes in other sports and unfortunately at 35 it's just time so raise your glass to Ben Bishop to Ben Bishop to an excellent career all right and with that let's take our first break of the night and then when we come back Zach has a story about the Minnesota Wild. He hasn't told me what the story is, but we're going to talk about the Minnesota Wild next and see what they're up to. Sure. This is The Neutral Zone on IE Sports Radio. He is Zach. I am Adam. We'll be right back after this. Sports fans, do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
up, everybody? This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. to a great game on USRN, but then the Wi-Fi crashed in the final seconds? Or do you simply want to listen to the best calls we here at USRN have to offer? Well, then you need to go check out our Audio Boom page. It holds a collection of our best calls that you don't want to miss. How do I get there, you ask? You can download the Audio Boom app and look up Ultimate Sports Radio, or simply go to audiobook.com slash ultimate sports radio. And as always, thanks for listening and making USRN one of the most talked about sports networks on Mixler.com. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, Dentarius Lava. And we're the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys should definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at FastBreakISR. D-Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And give you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. What is going on, everybody? My name is Harrison Glazer, and we're coming at you from the show that never sleeps podcast. I cover the Jets, the Islanders, the Nets, and the Yankees. This is Fia Moss, and I cover the Mets, Knicks, Rangers, and the Giants. Our show is live every Wednesday through Spreaker and a bunch of other ways to get our content. Again, we're the show that never sleeps podcast. We talk about all those New York sports. It's a lot of fun. We get into all of it. Please tune in again. That's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And we look forward to having you guys right here on Night Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome on back into the Neutral Zone here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. So amongst a myriad of action tonight in the NHL, it was supposed to include a game between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Minnesota Wild, one of the top games of the night. The Hurricanes are currently 19-7-1. The Wild are 19-8-1. Both 39 points. The potential for maybe an early season preview of a postseason matchup. You know, let's Mm -hmm. let's know. The game itself, unfortunately, was postponed. But that doesn't stop Zach from having some news and thoughts and opinions on 
the Minnesota Wild and their start to the season. Zach, take it away. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I found this article on ESPN earlier today uh, by Kristen Schulten. Uh, she's talking about how it's the case for the Minnesota Wild as a top Stanley Cup contender. That's the headline. Um, so she starts off, <clears throat> don't let their last two games fool you. The Wild are for real, and they're spectacular. <laughs> uh, the Wild have become, have been um, on the NHL's hottest run through early December. Winners of eight straight games before closing out their recent road trip with a back-to-back, with back-to-back losses at LA and Vegas. Minnesota's loss to the Kings was one the team's first defeat since November 21st, and it put them one victory shy of tying the franchise's second longest win streak, nine games back in 2006-2007. It was also the first time all season Minnesota had lost a game that was tied after two periods. Um, As Adam mentioned tonight, they were supposed to face Carolina tonight at home. Um, Why was it postponed? Was it COVID? I'm working on that. You keep going. Okay, cool. Um, But yeah, they're facing no panic. They remain atop the Central Division and tied for the second most points in the league. 39 and our sixth in overall points percentage, uh, 69.6%. By the numbers, since their streak started in, on November 24th, they have the most wins, 8, the most points, 16, third most goals, 40, and their 27th in goals against average, 2.30. They're especially good at even strength, second best 5-on-5 five five shooting percentage with 11.3%. And they have the best shooting plus save percentage at 105.6%. All of this while missing their top blue liner and captain, Jared Spurgeon, who missed eight games with a lower body injury before returning to the lineup last Thursday in San Jose. So how did the Wild emerge as a true Stanley Cup contender? Well, in July, uh, GM Bill Guerin bought out the final four seasons of Ryan Suter and Zach Parise's contracts. The pair of 36-year-olds were each signed to 13-year, $98 million deals. Uh, it was the salary cap considerations that really pushed Guerin to move on. <clears throat> Minnesota had made the, the playoffs in the last eight of nine seasons, but hadn't advanced past the first round since 2015. Guerin decided that that had to change. With Suter and Parise out, the Wild added... Dmitry Kulikov and John Merrill, who have emerged as a shutdown defensive pairing. Frederick Goudreau, I think he's related to Barkley. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> also signed in July and has become a solid two way player. Uh, and then Nashville had tried to sneak Rem Pitlick through waivers in October, but Guerin pounced, and Pitlick has 10 points in 16 games. And the reason their game was postponed today, Carolina already had two players in COVID protocols. They had four get put into protocols earlier today. Oh, so gosh. they were suddenly down an entire shift oh, yeah. of players. Yeah. So the league postponed the game. They'll figure they'll figure out. They've got they've had nine games now get postponed. Tying back into the Olympic conversation from last week. They keep adding up. We'll see what they have to do. But that's why the game was postponed tonight. Yeah. As far as the Wild going for this month, yeah, you look at some of the teams that they've been beating, too. They lost to the Golden Knights in their last game, 6-4. Uh-huh. to four. And they had lost the Kings earlier. But they beat the Sharks, 5-2, to two last week. Beat the Oilers, 4-1. to one. In Edmonton. What? A week ago tonight. Video game numbers, Edmonton, as in Connor yes, McDavid? Yes, as, as in Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Yeah, I remember. At Edmonton, even? At Edmonton. What? I remember sitting in rehearsal and saw my phone and just. I did a double take and it was, wait, what? <laughs> That's not how that was supposed to go. But yeah, Cam Talbot mm-hmm. with. 38 saves in that game. Dang. Yeah, that'll that'll earn you top star honors right there. Yeah. Before that, they had also beaten the Maple Leafs in okay. a shootout. They beat the Devils. 
they've been on a nice, Tear. nice <laughs> run here lately. Yeah. So that Edmund- absolutely. That Edmonton score, I would have expected the opposite. You know, Edmonton four, Minnesota one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Also beat the Lightning in there in that stretch. Absolutely torched the Jets seven to one <laughs> in, in that stretch. Actually beat. Uh, no, the Lightning beat them the first time. I was going to say they beat the Lightning twice, but now they took them to a to a shootout the first time in that stretch. But yeah, it's been a nice stretch of games for the Wild here for the last couple of weeks. For sure, the girl I follow on Twitter, uh, she's in Canada. She was mentioned something about. She's like, for those of you who have haven't never been to Winnipeg, um, it's basically it's basically Canada's Florida. <laughs> That's a little frightening, because the stories I've always heard from Winnipeg is that when you go to a Jets game, they allow everybody to leave in the second intermission so that they can go start their cars, oh my so that they make sure that nobody's engine seizes up on them when they have to actually leave at the end of the game. That freaking cold, huh? <laughs> yeah, Ooh. yeah. Not warm. Ooh, brutal. Not, not warm in Winnipeg. <laughs> well, not not warm, not like, that's not the comparison I think she's going for. I think she's going for, like, like trashy and, like, ah. oh, head, headlines with Florida man, you know? It's, instead ah. it says Winnipeg man. <laughs> ah, now I understand. Oh, okay, Winnipeg man. Yeah, I think that's more where she was going with it. Oh, okay. Underst- <laughs> now we're on the same page. Yeah. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, there's a little more if we, if we got time. Please. Cool. Um, <clears throat> Kirsten also talks about Joel Erickson Eck um, being back where he belongs. In last season's breakout performance, 19 goals and 30 points in 56 games. Erickson Eck proved he could be a strong 200-foot center. <clears throat> the question going into this season was who best to pair with Erickson Eck and make the best use of his talents. It goes back to the, the Mass Mutual commercial being about a duo. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, they started by moving Erickson Eck away from his former line mates, Jordan Greenway and Marcus Foligno, trying to pair him with uh, Kaprizov and Mats Zuccarello. Uh, these are all fine players, but it wasn't the right mix. Uh, let's see. So they reunited Greenway and Felino on Erickson's X flanks. Just like that, the magic was back. Their line dominated across the board during Minnesota's eight-game streak, registering 17 high danger scoring chances. Uh, they took to calling him a security blanket for Minnesota's offense, and so they have been. Uh, going up against the Maple Leafs last week, Erickson X line held Toronto's top scorers, including Austin Matthews, William Nylander, and John Tavares, off the board and at even strength. Um, in Edmonton, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl combined for one point while being suffocated by the wild shutdown line. Whew, wow. And Eck is still producing offensively, too. He is third on the team currently with 11 goals. He's behind uh, only Hartman and Felino, who both have 13. Wow, that's awesome. So he's still producing at a high offensive level, third in goals, and he is fourth in <clears throat> points with 20, only behind Kaprasov, Hartman, and Zuccarello. Yeah. Well, and that, that ties back into kind of what we had talked about at the beginning of the season with, um, with getting Seattle, the Kraken, set up. Because you know it's going to take a while for the team to gel, to create chemistry between your players, and to to figure out who is going to play play the best with these other players. Like she exactly what she said makes complete sense. Who is the best person to pair with Eric Snack to make best use of his talents? Exactly, <laughs> and that's you know that's the beauty of an eighty-two game season. You know, unlike football where you have such a finite amount of time you've got to come into the season already knowing hit the ground running you were exactly hit the ground running hockey you're you've got that time to experiment try different things see what worked yeah i i know see how that see how everything works and and who pairs well with whom and, sure. and you've got time you don't have to have the answer right away the first or second week of October when the games start counting for real. That's good, yeah. Um, through Eric, or through Minnesota's last 10 games, Eric Sinek has three goals and eight points. Foligno has six goals and seven points, and Greenway is finally clicking offensively with four goals and six points. 
Uh, not bad production from so-called third line with heavy defensive responsibilities. Um, what else here? Um, they talk about the resurgence of Ryan Hartman, um, counting on Cam Talbot, you know, the goalie like you were talking about earlier. Um, they say if this isn't the best Cam Talbot has ever been, then it's close, and that was hardly a given around Thanksgiving. Talbot was feeling good at 5-0-0 to open the season uh, and sharing the net with backup Capo Kakonen. Uh, then the veteran took a slide going 4-5-0 and zero, and spurring conversation whether the Wild needed to make an upgrade ahead of the trade deadline. Turns out they'd be getting one without making a deal. Thirty-four-year-old, <clears throat> The 34-year-old Talbot raised his own level of play to become one of the NHL's best goaltenders of late. Since November 24th, Talbot is tied for most wins, six in the league, with a 93.7 save percentage um, and 2.25 goals against average. That stretch was populated, <clears throat> excuse me, populated by wins over quality opponents, including Tampa Bay, Toronto, and Edmonton, with a 92.9 save percentage or better in each outing. Talbot's run coincided with the Wild losing Spurgeon injury, underscoring how vital the improved goaltending has been to Minnesota's accomplishments. It's only natural that Talbot will cool off and heat up again, but an area that was causing panic is now looking like a verifiable strength for the Wild. And you look at his numbers overall, he's 15-6-0 on the season. He's got a 2.71 goals against average, saving just under 92% of his shots. He's at 917 save percentage. He's also doing well in shootouts. He's stopped 7 out of his 10 shootout shots. He's just playing well. And one thing we always know when we get into April is that a hot goaltender will carry you. It'll carry you through any series. If you've got a goaltender that's hot, it almost doesn't matter what else you've got going on with the team. Taron times in the chat. He, he earns the pun of the night. The wild have gone wild. <laughs> but <I'm> ch- <laughs> However, he was surprised that they lost to the Kings. Mm, true. But lowly Kings. <laughs> the, low, the lowly, lowly Kings. Coming up next for the Wild, they've got the Sabres on Thursday night at home. That should be a win you would expect for Minnesota, but then they've got a big one on Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern, on a game that should be nationally televised. They will host the Florida Panthers coming up, so that should be a good one. The 40-point Panthers against the 39-point Wild. Nice. That should be a good game on Saturday. And hopefully, everybody will be able to see it. But there might be some people who can't. And especially now that both of us had had an opportunity for the vodka to run through us a little bit, we'll have some thoughts on the way games are televised around the NHL. Is that a segue? Did I just hear a segue? I, I <laughs> was trying anyway. We will good talk about that on the other side of a break. This is the Nutrizone here on IE Sports Radio. He is Zach. I am Adam. We are back in just a minute. Soccer Scoreboard Show with your host, Gabriel Montoya. This is the show for soccer, football, football fans, or whatever you call the beautiful game. Every week, I tackle the latest and greatest news from around the soccer world. From the English Premier League, to the World Cup, to MLS, Liga, and Mekis, and more. You can listen to the Soccer Scoreboard Show and our lineup of fantastic guests every Friday at noon here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
shores of the Puget Sound to the rushing waters of the Columbia River, stretching across the Great Cascades, and on IE Sports Radio lives the Northwest Territory Sports Show, hosted by me, Brad Buckingham. On this show, I cover all the great collegiate and professional sports teams that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. Of course, I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks, Seattle Mariners, Sounders, and even the Seattle Kraken. But I can't forget all of that is good in Oregon either. I got the Trailblazers, the Oregon Ducks, the Beavers, even the Timbers, and much, much more. You can listen to the show every Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern, noon to 1 p.m. Pacific, on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, USRN fans, do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. Football fans, this is me, Air Boy Larry, be inviting you to join myself, Colin Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at I Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head prom time face offs each week. You don't want to miss it. If you're someone who wakes up each morning with a list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day, then you just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the colleagues, and everything in between. This is me, Boy Larry B of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world sports themselves and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for the defining moment with me and Boy Larrabee every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there. And welcome back into the Neutral Zone here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. One last segment that we're going to be doing tonight before Zach and I get out of there. So, now that NHL games are on ESPN, one of the big advantages we all hope for with that would be more visibility across the league. For sure. One of the complaints you'd hear from time to time when NBC carried the games was that they had a very small number of teams that they would showcase in the national spotlight. And so you, the hope was ESPN would do a better job of showing all of the teams. But unfortunately, there's still problems. And I have to thank... Matt Owens of USRN, our colleague at our sister station, does a ton of play-by-play. He is a huge 
hockey fan. We should have him on sometime mm-hmm. as a guest and have some fun back and forth talking pucks. He is a Hurricanes fan, a big Hurricanes fan. And he was excited to watch the Hurricanes tonight. Then, of course, the game gets postponed for COVID reasons. However, it gave him some time to kind of put some thoughts together. The season started 63 days ago, October 12th. 30 of the 32 teams have had at least one game nationally broadcast to this point. And 27 of them have had two or more. Who were the two that were missing at first? Uh, the two that we are missing are the Blue Jackets okay. and the Hurricanes. Very odd. What are the what are the current standings? What uh, what is Columbus's record right now? I was gonna say Blue Jackets doesn't really surprise me because you know, they've never really had huge success ever since you know they started uh, joined the league like twenty years ago. Um, <clears throat> but then Carolina, I mean they they made the playoffs like every year last mm-hmm. I don't know five six years at least. Carolina is second in the Metropolitan with 39 points. Uh, their record is 19-7-1. And, and the Blue Jackets are, they have 29 points. So they're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They're fifth. 29 points, 14-11-1. and, 11 and 1. So Matt noticed that as well. So he broke down who has been featured the most. And what we're going to do is... I'm going to name the, the city. You just give me the record. Sure. And what he is defining as nationally televised are games that are on ESPN, ESPN Plus, TNT, or NHL Network. Sure. So there's our qualifier. <clears throat> we'll start at the top. Chicago. Chicago. Uh, 10, 15, and 2. Nine national appearances. What? Vegas. Well, probably because they've won the three cups in one decade. Uh, Vegas, 17, 11, and 0. All right. So that's a better record. Nine appearances also for Vegas. Okay. The newness hasn't worn off on that one, clearly. Right. Toronto. Toronto. Oh, 19, 8, and 2. So again, decent. Makes sense. The Rangers. Rangers, 18, 6, and 3. Again, decent. makes sense. They both have had eight appearances. The next four have all had seven, and we'll we'll back off the records now. Okay. Boston, New Jersey, Seattle, and Pittsburgh have all had seven. So, oh, Seattle's good. New team. Of course they want to get exposure for expansion, it. Expansion, want to give them exposure. Boston and Pittsburgh are big markets. Historical. Historical. Super Boston <laughs> is nuts for hockey. <clears throat> Pittsburgh is nuts for hockey, too. Then with six, you've got the Blues, the Capitals, the Kings, the Panthers, and the Predators. Okay. With five, kind of, Colorado. Kind of growing and emerging markets there. Colorado, Arizona, Anaheim, and the Islanders, Edmonton, Buffalo, and Dallas. Islanders only with five with as much success as they've had the last couple of years. Wow. And the Oilers, too. Yeah. And then Weird. at the very bottom, Montreal, Calgary, and Winnipeg all just have one. And then Carolina and Columbus have yet to be featured. Where's, where's Detroit? I didn't hear their name. Detroit has been featured... Four times. Okay. Four times nationally. <laughs> Matthew points out the Coyotes have been on national television as many times as they've won this season. They are five twenty and two coming into play. <laughs> they have been featured five times nationally. Okay, that's abs- That's even more ridiculous than Chicago. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Chicago at least has three cups in the last decade. They have a reason. Yes. Even if they're bad this year, they have a reason for you know for being shown on a national market or showcase event. Chicago, <clears throat> Chicago is one of those cities that, when in doubt, you pick them because they do move the needle. Sure. 
people tune in. They hear Chicago and they tune in. So yeah. that does make sense. But when, yeah, you've got teams like Arizona that have been featured five times. Makes no damn or sense. <laughs> teams like the Red Wings that have been featured four times. And meanwhile, Carolina has yet to be featured. Um, Minnesota has only been featured twice. We just They're one of the top teams yeah, in the West. One of the hottest teams right yep. now. Exactly. Tampa Bay has only been featured four times. They're the defending two-time champs. There's they, a problem. They need there. more love with that one for sure. <laughs> yes. There's also a disconnect and a problem there too. And I'm looking at the clock, so I'm going to make sure I make this quick. Blackouts should no longer be a thing. It's it's damn near 2022. <laughs> the idea behind black blacking out nationally televised games is if the local market also has its local broadcast going, then the local market can still get its airtime. And to put more butts in the seats, I think. I think it was not the original. Yeah, kind of, sorta. It's it's more it's more to protect the local broadcast. Okay. Where we live, half the time, depending on the team, we can't get the national broadcast. I can't get Lions games. <laughs> the time has come to end regional blackouts. If the local mark... And, and the funny thing is, you listen to fans of a team... More often than, than not, they want to hear the local broadcast. They're going to seek out the local broadcast, even if given the opportunity to listen to a national broadcast. With Blackhawks fans, I would hear it all the time that, oh, we'd love to have Pat Foley and Eddie Olchek on the call in the playoffs, but instead we're stuck with the NBC 2 or 3 team. Why can't we have the local guys? Team, fans want to always hear, especially if the local broadcast is good, fans are going to seek out the local broadcast. You don't have to sell a local broadcast. So the idea of protecting a local broadcast, to me, it's now archaic. And the blackouts. Let the games be out there. You shouldn't have... Matthew Owens, who lives in Carolina, who lives in the Hurricanes television market, he should be able to watch the Hurricanes, regardless of of if it's a nationally televised game or not. It should be, I have ESPN, the Hurricanes are on ESPN, ergo, and I, I live can in watch Carolina. the Hurricanes. <laughs> it doesn't matter where I live, I should be able to watch the Hurricanes. So the idea of blackouts, it needs to go away. It needs to be done. This idea that we need to protect the local market or, oh, well, you've got this other option available to you. Because sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just, your cable provider or your streaming provider doesn't have the local option available to you. So... Give me the national option. It's what's available to me. So it's a shame that... And this isn't unique to the NHL. This happens in MLB all the time. I get madder than a hornet's nest when the Cubs are on ESPN. I get ESPN. I can't watch them because NBC Sports Chicago, or now it's Marquee, is doing the Cubs game. I don't get Marquee. I can't watch Marquee. I can watch ESPN, you know? Yeah. Well, you're talking about local versus national broadcasts, too. Like, okay, so in the times that we do get the Lions games here, you say it's on Fox. 
<laughs> say it's got Joe Buck. <laughs> I, oftentimes, I will mute him, and I will turn on the radio and listen to the local guys instead. <laughs> so I hear you. You got to deal with that delay, though. Of, yeah, true. He, well, well, but you hear he's at the fifty. I look up. Oh, he's not. He's only at the thirty. <laughs> but but then it's it's almost like predictive because it's like oh something's happening. Let me go watch on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, it's fans will always gravitate towards the local broadcast, assuming it's of any kind of decent quality. You, yeah. you don't have to work as hard to sell the local bra- broadcast to the local fans. Exactly. So, and the blackouts. That's if you take nothing away from this segment, it is that we should end the blackouts. And before we get out of here, Zach, you had an interesting follow-up from the Olympics. We will do that real quick, and then it is time to get out of here. Sure. Um, Okay, we just spotted this one. Oh, where'd it go? Um, Just spotted this one on ESPN. MVP Connor McDavid expresses concern about the Olympics, wants, quote, to make sure it's safe for everybody. Uh, Team Canada would be one of the most star-laden teams, if not the most, in the upcoming Olympics. But its biggest star has major concerns about the NHL's participation, or lack thereof. Uh, NHL MVP Connor McDavid on Tuesday called the idea of potentially having to quarantine for up to five weeks, as Adam stated earlier, in China following a positive COVID test, unsettling as the league's participation in the 2022 Winter Games remains up in the air. The Edmonton Oilers captain and one of three players already named to Canada's provisional Olympic team spoke to reporters as coronavirus cases and postponements continue to rise across the league. Um, It's obviously going to be a very fluid situation, McDavid said before Edmonton hosted the Maple Leafs. There hasn't been a ton of information come out, and then there's the three- to five-week quarantine thing. It's been kind of floating around. Obviously, it's unsettling if that were to be the case when you go over there. Um, Talks about NHL skipping the 2018 Olympics... Uh, but committed to Beijing as part of the extension to the current collective bargaining agreement. Um, Filler. Yeah, Gary Gary Bettman said the plan to go, but they still have Boo. the deadline. They still have the deadline of January 10th to nix the plan without financial penalty, anyways. Um, McDavid, I'm still a guy that's wanting to go play in the Olympics, but we also want to make sure it's safe for everybody, for the athletes, for all the athletes, not just for hockey players. Um, yeah. Team Canada would be flush with the talent if the league does participate. Um, Alex Petrangelo, Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby. Uh, Canada will be the prohibitive favorite, oh, assuming yeah. NHL players participate. Yeah. Uh, Petrangelo uh, said he's not sure if he will go be going to China because of the potential of being away from family in long quarantine. Golden Knights goaltender Robin Leonard has already come out. He's a Swede. He's already come out and said he will not go. Um, yeah, medical experts uh, have a previously scheduled meeting set for later this week to review COVID nineteen protocols. All but one ty- one blah, blah, blah. all but one player, uh, Tyler Bertuzzi of the Detroit Red Wings, is believed to be fully vaccinated. Though the league is currently only recommending recommending booster shots. Um, Asked if an increase in positive tests and postponements were giving him flashbacks to March 2020 when the sports world and much of society ground to a halt, Calgary general manager Brad Trebling, Treliving wouldn't go quite that far. I don't think anything is going to feel like that. He said that that has to be a cold slap in the face, or that was a cold slap to the face. Um, NHL went to every Olympics from 98 through 2014. Um, Owners have always been lukewarm on the Olympics for a number of reasons, including disruption to the league calendar. And we've talked about postponements. If the postponements keep growing, they might not go at all because they might need those couple weeks to make up those games. Well, but then you've also got to deal with the fact that a lot of those venues have already booked those dates. You know, you've got concerts or other they, yeah, they did events talk about that coming in. Last yep, week so lots for the NHL to try and sort out and figure I do feel bad for the players because... This was the most important thing to them in the last collective bargaining agreement was getting to play in these Olympics, and now because of the pandemic, it might not be safe to do so. I wouldn't blame any player for skipping these Olympics, quite frankly. The, the prospect of... I've, 
I've been to China. I've been to Beijing. Beautiful. I would highly recommend if you get the opportunity to go visit. The idea of being quarantined in a hospital room in a foreign country where you don't speak the language for five weeks would be terrifying. I don't blame anybody for not wanting to be part of that. So certainly as we get closer to January 10th, that will be something to keep an eye on. All right, before we get out of here, one last quick shout out to our sponsors, the Southern California Warriors and Background Check International. Thank you to both of you guys for doing what you do and be sure to check out our Patreon on IE Sports Radio. We've got the link on our website, iesportsradio.com. Be sure to check that out. That does it for our show this evening. Thank you again to Southern California Warriors and Background Check International Business for continuing to sponsor us. Thank you, Larry, for all the hard work he does, you do, for keeping us busy. Thank you to Taryn for keeping us occupied in the chat room tonight. He can't watch his Lakers because of blackouts. The Lakers! It's... Ah! Ah! Yeah, yeah. Give me some more of that while we're at it. Give me some more of that new Amsterdam vodka. Zach, thank you for, for bringing that in. We get a chance to, to try some of the NHL's limited edition vodka. If you're an NHL fan and you like the logos, definitely check it out. If you're a vodka connoisseur, well, check out the bottle. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you to Mike Pat for Let's Wine About Sports, giving us the, the tips and tricks of, uh, of presenting this on air in a feasible fashion. Yes. Zach will be sure to get the pictures up on the Twitter page. He's already done that. He tells me so we are good there. Thank you for continuing to come here and listen to a couple of Hockey knuckleheads have some fun every week. Glad to be back after a couple of weeks off. We will be back next week. It's almost Christmas. we got to fit that into the, into the show next week somehow. All right. He is Zach. I am Adam. Until next week, stay out of the penalty box, light the lamp, all those good things. We'll see you next time. <laughs>